what's everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast, the podcast inspiring young rock and roll fans to discover new music and find a place they can connect and feel accepted. So welcome to the podcast. Everybody. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the family. Glad you're here with us. The band we have on today, this one is a hell of a lot of fun. I've seen this band live before. If you're watching a YouTube video, you're probably looking at my shirt saying, is that the name of the band? Discrepancies? Yes, it is. And if I'm already wearing their shirt, you know it's going to be a good one. And Oh, man, just get ready for it. But before we jump into the podcast, I want to thank support, which comes from Phoenix Fitness. So as you guys know, what are my two favorite things in the world? Podcasting like this and, of course, getting into mosh pits at concerts. And in order to do it the way that I like to do it, I have to train as hard as possibly come mosh pit fit. So what is mosh pit fit? It is having the stamina and the endurance to be in the pit from the beginning of the first band to the end of the last band and not take any breaks in between. And during that time as well, I have to make sure I'm strong enough to deliver some of those hits because I don't want to be the smallest guy in the pit. I want to be one of the biggest guys in the pit. But I know I'm not the biggest guy in the pit, so I have to make sure that I'm built enough to take some of those hits so I can keep doing this on a day-in and day-out basis. So I'm in the gym all the time. I'm constantly you know, doing cardio to make sure I get that endurance up, doing a lot of weightlifting. This is like a two-and-a-half-hour to three-hour excursion every single day. But I also make sure I'm preparing my body right and recovering right so I can do this day in and day out and achieve my fitness goals of being mosh pit fit. So I use the help of Phoenix Fitness for that because they made their type of supplements to help you achieve your fitness goals and prepare and recover right pre and post workout. They price up they have different kinds of supplements such as pre-workout, both sim and sim free. I use the sim free stuff because guys, I got way too much energy. I don't need any more. Also, different types of BCAA recovery compounds, which help you absorb nu- absorb nutrients into your muscles post-workout. They also have different types of creatine to help you build muscle, different types of protein to help you mu- build muscle, whey-based, collagen-based, plant-based protein. I use their chocolate malt-flavored whey-based protein because that is just good, good stuff. That's my personal preference. Different types of multivitamins and literally anything you might need to achieve your fitness goals, Phoenix Fitness has for you. So our listeners and, of course, viewers on YouTube can get 20% off using the code CPP20 at FNX. That's the comic description of the podcast. Thank you, Phoenix Fitness. Now it's time for a feature presentation. I've seen these guys play once before. It was a hell of a lot of fun. Their brand new EP is out now for you guys to go check out. And is there a consensus favorite? No. Everyone has a different one, so that's how you know it's going to be good. So please welcome the guys from Discrepancies to the podcast. Are you guys ready? Let's go! Yeah! Well, 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 ladies and boys and girls, listeners of the Chord Progression Podcast, I had the pleasure of finding out this, about this band one random night in March in Chicago when they opened for the Catch Your Breath Dark Divine and Until I Wake tour. And I was like, God damn, this is some cool stuff. And then I found out that their EP, The Product of Entertainment, came out. And man, I'm like, okay, I got to get these guys on the podcast. I got to talk to them. Their set was fantastic. More people got to know about this. And now it is time to make that dream come true. And to put it full circle, back during that show, they threw out a t shirt in the crowd, and I'm wearing it right now. So please welcome the guys, Garrett, Brandon, Mark, and Antonio from the band Discrepancies to the podcast. So, gentlemen, Welcome to the Core Progression Podcast. What's up? Thank you, man. What a welcome. That was great. Well, it's glad to be, you know, a part of this with you guys, have you on the podcast, and also be a guest right now in your van while you guys are on tour. So thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome, man. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. How has everything been going with you guys? I know the EP's been out for a little bit. You guys are out on the road already. You guys are continuing to go out on the road throughout the rest of the year. Just how has life been going for you guys at this moment? Dude. It's been amazing. awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, we're having a great time, man. We're loving the road. We've been meeting a lot of cool people, playing a lot of cool shows, you know, meeting some awesome bands, seeing some awesome bands, man. I'm just geeked every day. Yeah. Wouldn't trade it for anything, man. Exactly. Yeah. That's good. just Oh, oh go ahead. Just good to see the world. Yeah. That's a good way to put it, because if you take a look at the way life is going, it's you you could be just sitting in a desk job, you know, nine to five, just, you know, I'm going to work, coming home. But no, you guys are out on the road. You guys are playing shows. You guys are seeing some of the best bands out there. You're performing with some of the best bands out there. Who wouldn't be stoked to go and do that every single night? Am I right? Right. Yeah, exactly, man. It's, it's just super grateful, man. It's fun. See, what I got to be stoked for is I got to take a look at the schedule once again, because every time I see some come out from you guys, I'm like, okay, am I able to make any of these shows? Because remember how fun, much fun the last one was? I'm like... Please be a day that works for me every single time now. <laughs> we'll make something happen. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. we'll probably, would you, you, uh, West Chicago social club. That's where we, uh, 
where you saw us last. Yeah, we'll, hopefully we'll make our way back up those soon. Maybe like August or fall. Hopefully August or fall, depending. Sounds good, because uh, for me, it's I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so I always look at it as anywhere within a two-hour radius from where I'm at. So Green Bay, Madison, Chicago. If it's any day during the week and I can make that show, I'm going to be there because I look at it in this capacity. What is better? Is it going to be better to go to a show and then have fun and then remember that for a long time or make sure I get enough sleep to go to work the next day? I think option one is much better. 100%. 100%. And you guys, I'll say you guys are absolutely living that right now. So just fantastic. We do. We do. We, I think we might have a Madison date coming up soon. So we'll have to, we'll have to send you that whenever it gets, when everything gets finalized. Ooh, now I'm going to be excited about that. And I'm going to break out the discrepancies cut off for that one too. So <laughs> you're going to see discrepancies cut off Milwaukee Brewers hat, crazy dude in the pit. That's just going to be me. <laughs> dude. Yeah. You have, you have like the, an original design. You got a, a fresh design. You got a nice cut off there. You made it yourself. Like no one has that bro. Like it's, it's killer. One of a kind, one of a kind, one so of a we'll, kind, especially with the torn part. That's like on the left end. That's, that's not going to be tied together. <laughs> Yep, yep. We're gonna know right away. The one of one. Yep. The one of one. Well, of course, one of the big things that happened, you guys, this year was the release of the EP Proactive Entertainment. Five songs on there. I went through every single one of them, and by the time I got through the end of it, I just kind of sat in front of my computer like this, just thinking, "Why was this only five songs? Why couldn't this been like twelve or thirteen a full <laughs> album? Because this was awesome." Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yeah. yeah, thank you, man. You got a favorite? Yeah. Oh, that that is that is a tough one to say. Honestly, and let me look through the notes here because I've got notes on these. And probably the one that I would have to say is my favorite would be Limitless. Really? Oh. Yeah. I feel like one one thing I've noticed is I feel like everybody that I've talked to has a different favorite. Yeah. It's there's not there's not one universal one yet, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. All right, now let me ask you guys this. Why do you think that is? Why do you think there is no universal favorite on this EP? Because uh, no one's really listening to it. No, I don't. <laughs> 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 I, no, I, I have no idea. I don't know. That, I guess they all slap, Bryn. Oh, yeah, okay. all slap. I, yeah, I guess that might have something to do with it. <laughs> that might nope. have something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, uh, I don't know. That's a tough question, but... I, I feel like all of them are really fucking good songs. All oh, like yeah. single worthy, so to speak. Right, right. Yeah, when I, a, no. I was say when I was going through it, I think I kind of picked up on a theory of why that is. And if you guys want, I can share it with you. Why I think there is no singular favorite. Please, Please share it. Let's hear it. Okay, so when it goes through the style of the music, of course, it's very heavy with the rap rock mix in there. And when I was going through it, it was every single song sounded like it was blended between you guys and like two other artists at the exact same time. So when other people are taking a look at where some of these influences came from, where some of these ideas came from and where it's hitting them respectively, you know, there's gonna be certain bands that are their favorites that really they pick up on and really go forward with it. And with Limitless for myself, I looked at that. And right from the get-go, I'm like, okay, definitely has some of the discrepancy style in there, but it also has some of the style of, like, From Ashes to New that I really like in there. It has a bridge that kind of reminds me a little bit of a Beartooth kind of vibe with the chorus that brings in some of this more elements of Breaking Benjamin into the whole entire mix, and it just all worked together so well. And I love Beartooth. From Ashes to New is one of my favorite bands. I love Breaking Benjamin when I was uh, in high school, so I'm like, this is something that with your guy's style of rap rock, bringing these other influences, it just connected with me. But you go to some other songs like Recovery, and I'm like, okay, now we're mixing more of that discrepancy style in with something that reminds me of Linkin Park in a way. Then we would go to something like, um, let's see, what was the next one? Hands Up, and I'm like, okay, now we're going to get back into discrepancies. But it feels like it kind of can be mixed with Limp Biscuit at the sa- exact same time as well. So if you like more of that Limp Biscuit style, you're going to be a little bit more towards that one compared to the others, but you're still going to like the others as well. Systematic Suffering, I'm like, okay, now we're mixing like discrepancies, early 2000s hard rock and POD together. And then you go to Testify, and I'm like, now we're starting to see something more of some more rock style in there, but it's like discrepancies meets I Prevail meets the guys from Kingdom Collapse. 
And no matter what you like, there's going to be something on here for you on this EP with the discrepancy style at the core. It just depends upon maybe what other influences you really are into, what other styles you're really into. And for me, when I heard that opening riff to Limitless, and I felt like, you know, this is something I absolutely love from a band like you guys and mixing with From Ashes to New, I was hooked immediately. That's awesome. That's a that's a that's a very sound theory. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah, because you basically you just got everything for everyone, and people can have a, the opportunity to pick and choose what they feel what resonates most to them. You know, yeah. that's really sick. That's cool. Yeah, and when it comes down to it too, it's you can easily tell that it's your guys' style as well. Because when you have the verse, especially with you, Antonio, with you rapping, I'm look, I'm listening. I'm like, this everything flows together. It has this flow of you know, you take a look at the style. I'm like, you're flowing like Tech Nine. You're kind of flowing like the guys from Pod. Yeah, you're flowing like Mike Shinoda with some of these patterns. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is absolutely nuts. Then we get to the choruses and some of these grander, more hard rock choruses that mix in there. It's the mix that really brings it out to him. Like this is definitely a discrepancy song there's some other influences coming in there but at the core it is still you guys and it's still something that i'm sitting here thinking listen to these songs i want to see these live again i want to feel that experience once again and i think everybody that's listened to it so far they're picking out their favorite songs they want you to play all five of these because they're going to like all five but there's going to be always that one in there that's going to be their favorite so 20 percent of the crowd's going to like limitless like myself 20 percent is going to like recovery 20 percent is going to like hands up 20 percent with systematic suffering and 20 percent with testify but 100% of the people are going to be there because there's a song on the EP that they love. Dude, yeah, yeah that's well said. Well said. That's very, very well, well said. said. That's yeah, you you kind of just blew my mind right there. I hadn't really <laughs> thought about that. <laughs> Hey, when it comes down to it, though, I love music. I love being able to look at it and go through it and really get a feel for it. And then when I get to see how you guys have made it and get to experience that, but then it's hearing you guys talk about it and maybe, okay, here's where maybe some, some ideas come in, mixing between the two. It, it's just awesome. It just really brings up a lot of like positivity. And even when I saw you guys perform live for the first time back in March, it was just the energy behind it was incredible. So now again, mixing the stuff you guys got in the EP with a live set, it, it's got to be a clear winner every time you go out on stage and perform. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially testify. That's the, yeah, that's the one that's been hitting the hardest re lately is testify. People really react to that song. So we, and plus we really like playing that one. That's one of our favorites. So that might, that we might be biased, but yeah. yeah. Like between that and hands up, but since we hands do hands up, up first, it kind of like people are still kind of gauging like okay what's what this? is this band yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. what's going on yeah but yeah it's a good it, intention yeah it is for sure i can definitely see that i think i think maybe when you guys played in that west chicago that night i think you guys did open up with hands up as well because at first everyone in the crowd was like i'm not sure what what's going on with this band i'm not sure if anyone really heard of you at that point but right after that first song i mean i was looking around the crowd i'm thinking Every like you got people there for catch your breath. You got people there for dark fun. You got people there for until I wake. And everyone was into what you guys were doing. The crowd was engaged with it. Everyone was going back and forth, up and down, feeling the beat, feeling the power. Everyone was having a blast. So I can see where maybe hands up isn't the one that's going to be the be like taking the best, especially when you're starting off it because everyone's still trying to get a feel for you guys. But then after that song, anything that hits like testify afterwards is going to be a massive hit because hands up has brought them in right away. It's quelled right. any sort of question in people's minds about do I like discrepancies or not? And the answer after hands up is, well, we're into this for the rest of the show and we're into <laughs> this after the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah so and that was a good show. That was a really good show. Oh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So since you guys have been playing these songs out on the road, what are some of like the craziest moments you've seen, you know, playing these songs live? Because there's got to be something that you guys have been able to do where these crowds have been going nuts, really getting into you guys. And maybe some of those crazy moments that you hear from like crazy concert stories on YouTube or like Ozzy biting the head off a bat, like those kind of moments have to be. Oh, oh. Oh, I don't know if we've had anything that wild. Yeah, not because we still. I mean, how, how long have we been playing these songs now? The new EP, probably just a couple <laughs> tours now. Couple yeah. Tours now, yeah, nothing too crazy, but it's it's amazing to me that like this music just came out and people are already like we had somebody last night who we never he knew all the words to every song. Mm. Yeah, that was like, crazy. On the and we just released these songs. Mm -hmm. Like that's insane to me. 
but um, yeah, I can't think of anything like too too crazy. We'll have to revisit that question after Friday because we have a hometown show on Friday, and our yeah. hometown show is always insane. They're always last nice. time somebody we played with Brandon's old band, and somebody smashed the entire toilet. There was oh, no yeah. toilet left in the video. Dude, this is crazy because this ripped it out of the, of the floor. Dude, smashed it to pieces, <laughs> ripped it off of the wall, smashed it to pieces. <laughs> and this, ha- this has happened in my previous man. This has happened twice. <laughs> Two times after our set. At Fubar. Some, at Fubar, a venue in St. Louis. After our set, we went to the bathroom. The toilet was destroyed, ripped <laughs> off the wall, shattered to pieces. And then we played it. I played a show with discrepancies at the time before I joined the band. Same exact thing happened. Don't know who did it. Yeah. <laughs> it, was either, oh, God, it, was, it was either somebody was really jacked up from the set or somebody had the worst shit of their lives. <laughs> explosive diarrhea on a consistent basis either when they go and see brandon play or it was was something where someone was so into the show was feeling the energy and said i have to destroy something but if i'm going to destroy something it's got to be epic and i don't want to take anyone else out in the process what can i do they see it so i'm like i'm gonna rip this off the wall i'm gonna smash it to pieces but those things are not light so they had to really really work at it right I don't know. I don't know how who this person must have been a Viking. How the hell did it? It's a mis. I still got pictures of it too, just so I can go back to like instill. You just yeah. don't know. You don't know. It's insane. No one's owned up owned up to it. So. <laughs> Well, now I'm thinking, damn, I'm going to have to message you guys on Friday and just ask you what happened after your hometown show. What, <laughs> what are the state of the, what's the state of the bathroom at that point? That's going to be the real question. Yeah. Hopefully it's intact, but <laughs> we'll find out. We'll, we'll find out, but I, it's always great to hear, you know, when bands are playing their hometown shows, it's like, there's always gonna be a lot of people that get behind it, but it seems like as time goes on, it's not only are people in your hometown for those hometown shows really getting into it, but you're having people that are showing up to these shows, knowing every single word to every single song and seeing right. the crowds grow and grow, knowing more of your stuff, getting into more of your stuff and being into it straight from the get go instead of oh, this is the first time we're hearing them. This is awesome. It's We've already heard them beforehand, and we're a repeat customer because we just don't want to stop. Right. This tour started in Mechanicsburg, and it was like 10 days after we had just played in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, which is not too far from there. And uh, we had a – it was one of our best turnouts already on this tour, and we had a ton of people that were there from the Harrisburg show. So really, most people one. like 10 days apart came and saw us twice. Yep. Yeah, They got to see different sets too because we're doing a different set right now. So Yeah. But yeah, we had a few. We've been switching out songs and stuff, having a good time, you know? Yeah. Normally, it's like you, you do a tour and you have a set list and you keep it kind of the same. But this tour, I don't know what I don't. We've been just switching out, like, like just switching out like well, five different songs. For our hometown show, we have to do an hour. Yeah. But for the rest of the tour, we're only doing like 30 to 45 minutes. So we kind of just been swapping out the extra songs to make sure we're feeling fresh on them. So Right. And just to have fun too. Yeah, just, just to stress me out. Just yeah. <laughs> make him practice a little more. <laughs> Well, well, again, it partially it does make sense. I mean, of course, that first the show between Harrisburg and Mechanicsburg, 10 days apart, you know, it's a different tour. Of course, you're going to have different songs for it. That makes a lot of sense. And when it comes to you guys playing an hour long show in your hometown versus half hour to 45 minutes in these other places, you're going to have those songs to continue to be in rotation. You want to stay fresh. them. That makes a lot of sense. But I remember this was about back in March. I was talking with Dustin, the bassist from August Burns Red, and they had been doing like two completely different sets. For their shows, like one night they're doing set A, a second night they're doing set B. There was some overlap, but they wanted to give the challenge of we got so many songs, let's give this a shot. And it's something where it does a number of things. One, is it harder to do? Yeah, because now you have to remember more songs. You have to remember like when they come in order. And you're going to continue to stress out Antonio to the point where, you know... He might just freak out on stage and start singing the wrong song and be like, well, we're going to sing this one now because this is going to be fun. We're going to mash the two together. Mashup time. However, (laughs) however, what it also does at that point in time too is because I take a look at it for myself. So say I knew you guys were doing two completely different sets 
And say you guys did one show up in Milwaukee, and then the following night you did a show in Chicago. And I love the first show so much. Like, I'm going to go see the second one. And it's going to be even cooler because now I get to see a whole second set. People that are in that close proximity that are really into those shows, they're going to go see both of them, get a completely different experience each time. And something that's going to stick out in their heads. And they're going to think of you guys in such more of a positive light because they had two different, completely different experiences, both for the positive on different nights back to back. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's very cool. I love August Burns Red, by the way, and they just have such a huge discography. So they, I mean, shoot, I'm surprised they don't have a set C. You know what I mean? Like that band is just, just rips. They probably could have a set C and then instilling each set, Mariana's Trench will still be in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be. Has and whitewashed. To be. And whitewashed. And, and whitewash will always close out the show. Yeah, yes. 100%. Yeah. It'll work. And as you guys continue to go on your careers, as you continue to build up, continue to go out and play shows, because you write more music, you might very well get to that point where you have enough songs to do a set A, a set B, and then a set C if you guys want to pull that off. It's very possible with the sound you guys have and with the energy that it brings. For sure. I can definitely see us like at some point having that to where if we doing headliner tours or whatever, we'll probably switch out, like have multiple set lists. Yeah. You know, we'll bring out old songs and then newer songs, all that type of stuff. I can totally see us doing that for sure. And I'm just thinking about it. It'd be a lot of fun to see something like that too. Of course, that's, you know, probably going to be a couple of years down the road. And hopefully sure. at that point in time, I'm still, you know, all into this thing, wanting to go smashy, smashy into a bunch of people in the middle of the pit. Cause yeah, I'm not break a toilet or two. Oh, oh, I feel like it's going to have to come to that point where I'm gonna have to break a toilet or two. Oh man. <laughs> I should, I should see if my buddy still is my, one of my best friends. He was friends with this one guy. I'm not sure if he still lives or not. He owned this abandoned warehouse and what we would do is we'd go over there and he had a bunch of toilets that he'd just find. So we just throw them off the roof for fun. And they would just <laughs> smash. It's like a three-story fall and just smash everywhere. But he lived right by like the bus depot. There was a huge brick wall that separated the uh, this warehouse and the bus depot. So none of the shattered pieces would go there. And at the end of it, we'd clean it up and everything. But it was just so cool just to throw a toilet down there. So I do have some experience when it comes to a destruction of a toilet, toilet in yeah. more of a forceful manner. Yeah, yeah you got experience in toilet physics. <laughs> You know where the pieces go when they shatter. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's just I, when it come there. But the only thing difference is they're already pre-removed when I got them. So having to get into a venue and literally unhook the toilet so I can run out to the middle of the crowd with it <laughs> in my hands. Like, we got it. That might be a little <laughs> difficult. Mm-hmm. I swear to God, if because of this, we turn into the band where people have to start bringing toilets to smash. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. <laughs> well, maybe just, you know, we might just change it up a little bit. Maybe we just, you know, find floaties in the shape of toilets on Amazon, big blow up things. Okay. So we're bringing in toilets, but now they're just big, giant, you know, inflatables that we're just batting around the whole entire time. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah, that's a good, that's a good uh, middle ground there. I'm like to start that. doing a VIP package where you get to smash the toilet there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, that would be a VIP experience that I would definitely pay for. And I think a lot of people would too. The oppor- good laugh. Oh, the opportunity to smash a toilet with an absolutely kick-ass band. Who wouldn't want to do that? <laughs> Literally kick-ass. That's where your ass goes on the toilet. Okay, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the joke was there. Execution-wise, maybe about a 3 Terrible. out of 10. I mean, it, it could have been a lot better. I'm just being generous with the 3. It's 100% of the shots you don't take. That's right. Wayne Gretzky, Wayne Gretzky Michael Scott. Michael Scott. <laughs> oh, oh, we're very well aware of this. Well, outside of a live perspective, now that the EP's been out for a little bit, what has been the response, especially from fans online? What have you guys been seeing? What have people been talking about? Because live is one thing, but of course, not everyone's going to get a chance to see the band live at on this tour. Not everyone's going to get a chance to see the band live on the first tour post EP. But when everyone listens to it, everyone's going to talk about it. So what has the response been from everyone outside of the live setting? I feel like Hands Up is getting a lot of love online. Yeah. yeah. Hands Up is like in the lead by far. Yeah. I would say. Um, 
What, what do you, what would you recently, say is like? I feel like recently, too, people have, what I've seen comment a bunch of systemic suffering. Yeah. Like, it's, it, but overall, overall, all it seems like uh, people really like the album, what I, what I see. So, not a lot of negative feedback this time. Around. No. Yeah. So, no, I, I'll say even on normally, too, you're still going to get negative feedback at any sure. point in time because it's the internet. The internet's not a happy place. Yeah, for sure. Man. For sure. That is darn sure. Okay. But just seeing but, the fact that you guys are seeing success with Hands Up and also seeing more success with Systemic Suffering and what you guys had spoke about, too, where it seems like everyone has a different favorite song. There is no clear consensus favorite. That ends up speaking to, if you take a look at that, no one has a clear-cut favorite. There's not that much complaining about or not that much, you know, hate around there. And it's, for the most part, everything that you're is coming through is positive. Listenership is up. And a lot of things are just working in the right direction. It means you put out one hell of a solid product front to back. Yes. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. We, yeah, product of entertainment. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're very happy with it, man. Like, we, I th- um, making that record was just such a good time. We, uh, we all was. had a blast. Like, yeah. we, it, and it felt, it was like a real, like, true collaboration, too. Like, everybody was just involved and in putting things in and trying things. And we were just, you know. Our last, our last album, we kind of, like, wrote basically mostly in advance and then recorded from home like in between work shifts and stuff like that yeah whereas this time around we actually went to like a studio for a few weeks and got to like just sit in an airbnb and literally go to a studio and write and then go back to the airbnb and then write and then go back to the studio and write and then go back to the airbnb it was a yep. good experience though yep. mm-hmm. down in orlando florida yep so you're going from instead of recording, you know, in between work shifts, maybe at home back in St. Louis to going down to record in Orlando for a couple of weeks. Hopefully that recording was during the winter. So you weren't like completely fried down there when it's like summertime in Orlando. It's like 100 degrees and you're sitting there like either get me the AC or just that's it. I'm tapping out for the day. Right. Yeah, <sighs> it, was, it was the latter. It was the July heat, but we had a pool. Yeah, we did. We had a pool. We had a pool. It was great. So so then it's definitely it's right okay it's getting hot outside now we're gonna go right in the pool in the <laughs> pool jams <laughs> yeah hey that could be the B side to this EP first you got the A side Proctor Entertainment then you got B side pool jams with discrepancies <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'll be out next pool year <laughs> just make sure on the cover for that B side EP just make sure you guys are all in the pool while sitting on inflatable toilets. Yeah. Inflatable <laughs> toilets. There you go. Yes. yes. Noted. And then watch all of a sudden I'm going to listen to one of those songs. It's going to be like one of the hardest songs I've ever listened to. I'm going to be like, Jesus Christ, this is the B-side track? <laughs> Shit. Right. But apparently this pool song. jams is aggressive as all hell. <laughs> <laughs> this song is the shit. Literally. <laughs> Yeah, LB song number three. This song is the shit. Bring the season. It's just a giant toilet. <laughs> or was it T S I T S or however whatever that spells? I don't even know what that spells, but that's the acronym for this song is the shit. <laughs> <laughs> People like might be wondering like what it. it is, and you could literally take that acronym and just like put it in the song and just do a bunch of different things with it. And it's like, well, what's the song name? Because is it, is it this? Is it this? This? Nah, just this song is the shit. That's it. That's it. That's, right. that's it. That's all you need to know. Listen to it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So I'm going to be looking forward to that. And then I'm pretty sure the inflatable toilets will be a staple at discrepancy shows. You're going to see like three people walking in just, all right, why is there like, why does it look like their chest is a little bit like puffed out, but then also like in a weird shape? Next thing you know, five minutes later, the show gets going. You're going to start seeing just people in the crowd just blowing up these things. Like, what the heck is it? Nope, it's just like, so start batting it around. Let's have a good time. I, I don't know. I would be crying laughing. I don't know if I could finish the set. I would be laughing so hard. That's That would be insane. You guys are giving me an idea now. <laughs> I feel like if anyone's going to try and do this first, it's going to have to be me. It's got to be you. You do it. You, you got to be the pioneer. The, the toilet experience, man. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but but I might, but the question is, do I pull it out at the beginning of the set and risk you guys laughing through the whole entire thing, or do I pull it out at the absolute end and just like, okay, you guys got through most of the set, everyone's into it, and now there's just a giant inflatable toilet flying everywhere. 
<laughs> we yeah. laugh a lot during our set anyway. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it might be better for us to laugh all the way through the set. <laughs> Anytime something goes wrong on stage, man, Brandon and I start laughing. I usually start laughing. <laughs> All right, so I might just wait for that moment, just like peek up from the pit and all of a sudden I start to see you guys start laughing. I'm like, okay, it's go time. Just whip it out. It's go time. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh, man. Just, just the only thing I ask of you is please make sure venue security does not kick me out for that. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no, no, no. You, you, you get a pass. We'll sneak you back in. Yeah. Perfect. Well, now that that whole entire plan is made, what else you guys got planned for 2023? EP is out, of course, by the time you're ending with this run. I mean, we're going to be one half of the way through 2023. So second half of the year, what's it looking like for discrepancies? And what can all the fans really sink their teeth into with what you guys got going on? We've got a brand new video for Testify that's in the works right now. That's amazing. (laughs) We already got the first rough edit. I couldn't believe he said it was a rough edit because it looks amazing. Yeah, you know <laughs> I wanted to put that out. I Me too. Uh, so that's going to be cool. We potentially also have a, a new video for Hands Up coming out as well. It'll be like a live uh, type setting. It's going to be at, it'll be a film at one of our hometown shows coming up. So, yeah. so if you're there on Friday, man, or if anybody listening to this happens to be there on Friday, it's probably going to come out after Friday, but... <laughs> You were there. You might be in that video. So yeah, um, you never know. And then outside of that, man, we got a lot of tours coming down the pipeline. We're trying to keep. We're going to be gone pretty much all of August. We're lining up stuff right now for September and October, and we're just trying to stay as busy as possible to bring the music to the people. And uh, and we're making new. We're making new tunes. Too. Make some noise. We're writing a lot music. of new stuff. So that yeah, because I'm I'm already ready to get back in the studio. Same. To be honest, you know. See, with, with the way that this EP sounded, I don't blame you for wanting to get back into the studio to keep making the music you guys are making and keep being influenced by what you want to be influenced by. Just as it continues to roll, as it continues to flow, <laughs> you're not going to want to stop this. You're going to want to keep this train rolling and just keep yeah, for doing sure. what you're doing. The positivity that's been around the band, it just keeps increasing. And it's it's sometimes, you know, maybe you want to pull back at points because maybe it's okay. We need want to take a break for a little bit. But when that positivity is rolling, it's just so infectious. You want to keep going and you want to ride that way for as long as possible it seems like that's what you guys are doing because you're loving it every step of the way and i don't blame you one bit for it it makes it great for all the fans because we get a chance to see you guys perform live we get to be a chance to have that experience we get to listen to music that keeps coming out that just gets more and more kick ass and my biggest thing is now you guys are working on tours for some you know later dates for some other other uh whatever packages i'm just wondering who you guys might be going out with in terms of like how could this sound is there going to be a potential like massive you know seven dust headliner that goes on where i'm going to see discrepancies open for seven dust and the fans are going to be all into it or are you guys going to end up going out and you know if you, i'll use limp biscuit an example say limp biscuit decides to do a whole reunion like okay we're going to do a full come back to her who's opening for limp biscuit all right you got this band this band discrepancies is number one those yeah, fans man. are going to go in there like who the hell is discrepancies and they're going to you know your set's going to be over and they're going to be like Alrighty, um, instead of the maybe the two other openers, can we just get discrepancies to play again before Limp Biscuit and then the discrepancies <laughs> yeah. to go on stage with Limp Biscuit? Can we just get that to happen? Because that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> that actually speak this into existence. Yes. Man. The universe needs to listen right it, now. It's gonna happen. Yeah. That stuff's gonna happen. I feel it. I can feel it. That has actually happened. I mean, not at that level, but the last two tours we did, we just did a tour with Outline and Color and Varsity, and we also just did those dates with Until I Wake. And both bands, after we did those dates with them, were like, hey, man, can we just throw discrepancies on a few more shows, man? Like, we'd rather just keep playing with those dudes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I, we definitely I, appreciate that. I remember seeing that you guys got put on that show with Outline and Color and Varsity. And I wanted to go see that one because I've had I've had Skaggs in the podcast where I'm good friends with Joey from Varsity. So I'm like, I, I wanted to go see that one. When the date dropped, I look at that date and I literally said, shit, I already <laughs> have tickets for a different show that day. Oddly uh, enough, uh, it's a band we already talked about beforehand, August Burns Red. <laughs> nice. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. fair enough. That's a good. That's a good show to go to. We, yeah. That's a. We're we're hoping to tour with those guys again. Like we had so much fun. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we were just talking to them yesterday. Yeah, I was just. I just texted Skags yesterday. So. Yeah. It, like I think about you guys, and I think about Outline and Color. I'm like, it fits. It works so well. Like seeing you guys go out on the road again would be fantastic. For sure. 
and it, and not even not only is the package just good and it works flowed super well it's just they're everybody's awesome people so we're all just like friends hanging out is what it feels like you yeah. know what i mean yeah so oh yeah i love those just guys like travel with the buds you know what I'm saying? yeah the yeah buds. yeah yeah that's what you want like the camaraderie just like hanging out like dudes that are chill and cool or sharing the same passion as you and you just having a good time you know absolutely well, well, that's what it's like when I think about you guys. I mean, one of the one so I the one show I saw, the passion, the energy was there. You listen to the music, the passion, the energy is there as well. So I feel like any band you go out with on the road, and even if it's just one show or two shows, that band's gonna ask to see how many more shows you can join in on because they're not gonna wanna have you guys just be on one or two. Hell, you guys might play on the first show like you do with the Until I Wake tour, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, can we just add this band to the whole package for the rest of the way? I don't care yeah. how we make it work. Let's just make it work because this is way too much fun. And that energy that you guys bring to a show is something that is, it's so infectious. It's people, you can't sit still. You can't even stand still. You can't just stand there and go, oh yeah, man, good set. No, you have to move when you guys are playing. It, it, it's a necessity. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah, man. Yeah, because that's what we try to do, man. I go crazy on stage, you know, like just, you know, trying to, I don't know. Just have a good time. Have yeah. a good time. Have a good time. The discrepancies way. And the next time, you know, you guys play live, that good time, and I can see you play live, that good time might happen. But you'll see the inflatable toilet start to come up, and it's like, <laughs> what the? <laughs> well, Kevin's here. He life. said he was going to do it, and he did it. <laughs> that would make my life, dude. <laughs> That's funny. Oh boy, I think it's going to make that happen. So I know you guys got to get going to your next show. So as we bring this podcast to conclusion, one thing I'd like to do is give my guests, which is all of you in this instance, a chance to say whatever you want to say, plug, run a plug, promote, run a promote at the end of the podcast. So guys, the floor is yours. Okay. Well, I'll start with Product the Inter- product of Entertainment. It just came out May 12th. It's out yeah. now. Stream that, buy it, play the crap out of it. Please. Steal it, whatever you got to do. Steal it Steal if you it. got to. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but please don't do that yeah <laughs> do if you want to know me. anything that's going on with our band everything's over at discrepanciesmusic.com we got merch all the tour dates all the announcements the albums there you can stream it straight from there everything's there you want to find our socials it's all right there discrepanciesmusic.com also follow us on bands in town if you're one of those people because that app is awesome. show your show the shows they will let you know every time we're coming to your city and then you'll never have to know yeah we got more dates coming up announced we're finishing up the wake at last tour right now we got a until i wake dates coming up more until i wake dates coming up and it's just it's gonna be good lots of tours coming down the pipeline yes. so keep your eyes peeled on the pages it's gonna be busy for sure Oh, I've been keeping my eyes peeled on those pages for those tours, so you know I'm not going to miss out on that. I don't want anyone <laughs> else to miss out on that. So the best way to make sure that you check out Proact of Entertainment, that you check these guys out on their socials so you know exactly when they're playing live and continue to support the band in any way you can, here's the best way to go and do that. Go to the description of this podcast where it says find discrepancies online. There's going to be links for all of their socials, links for their website, links for where you can watch their music videos, links where you can stream their music, download their music, buy their music, and support them in any way. It's all going to be down there labeled. I'm doing all the hard work for you. All you got to do is go down there, find your favorite one, click follow, click share, click like, click subscribe, click watch, click buy some merch, buy yourself a t-shirt and look as good as I do in this one, and yes, go and support this band any possible way. No one those shows are coming out. And we'll make sure you, we see you there, especially if you're coming to anywhere around my neck of the woods, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, maybe Madison. If you guys are up to Green Bay, Chicago, if I'm able to make it, I'll be there. I'm bringing the inflatable toilet. So everyone else that's going to want to be a part of that, <laughs> make sure you're a part of that as well. Now it's time for number two. And whenever I'm guessing the podcast, I enjoy the podcast. I tend to make a certain promise as a way to say, thank you for being on the podcast. I really appreciate it. And I would like to continue to support the band in any way I can. I, the guys from in until I wake hit on this, the guys from dark divine hit on this, the guys from catch your breath hit on this. And at that show at West Chicago, I was able to make good on this promise. Everyone else has hit on this promise and you guys absolutely have hit on it. So this is my promise to you guys. It is not an, if it is a, when normally it's when I can see the band perform live for the first time, but obviously I've already seen you guys perform live once when I get to perform live the next time I'm going to do what I did with those guys. I'm going to go all Liam Neeson on you, like from Taken. I'm going to look for you. I will find you. I will pursue you. And when I find you, I will say hi. And first round's on me. Oh, yeah. Thank you, dude. Appreciate you, bro. I can't wait, man. 
So if you guys are all at the merch table and all of a sudden it's, you know, you see the inflatable toilet walking up your way, just know that it's going to be me and first round is coming your way. Hell yeah. Yes. Will we have to drink it out of the toilet bowl? No, you you, you don't have to if you don't want to, but you never know. If there's enough fans that go, toilet bowl, toilet bowl, you might have to. I I succumb to peer pressure. I would probably be. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the, the race would be to see who would drink their drink out of the toilet bowl, the inflatable toilet bowl first. You or me? Because I'm very, I'm much, I'm not the like very susceptible to peer pressure. But I'm usually the catalyst of the stupid shit. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's my, that's what I got. <laughs> other, so it would be like this. I'll start it, and then you guys just follow along, and all of a sudden it's gonna be the other guys just. Now nah, we're just going to enjoy this one over here. Fair enough. Yeah, we're just going to have a good time. Inflatable toilet. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Well, guys, as we bring this podcast to its official conclusion, I cannot end this by saying goodbye for a number of reasons. One, I made you guys a promise and I aim to keep that promise. Two, I've already seen you perform once. I want to see you perform twice, three, four, five, more times than fingers I have in my hands. I want to see you guys play more than that. So yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make sure I support them any way I can. And by doing that, it feels way too wrong to say goodbye. Goodbye is way too final, along with the fact that I would love to bring you guys back in the podcast in the future. So can this be goodbye? Nah. This is going to be, I'll see you later. See you later, man. Well, folks, that was my interview with the guys from Discrepancies, Garrett, Brandon, Mark, and Antonio. And now it's time for Kevin's final thoughts. So... One of my favorite bits of this podcast was the whole toilet smashing and then bringing an inflatable toilet to a show, which is something I am planning on doing because that just sounds like a hell of a lot of fun and to get the guys to crack up. But it, it's something where I reminisce about the first time I saw the band and the energy that they played with and just how much fun it was and how positive it was. It really fit into this whole entire, you know, vibe from them on this episode. If you take a listen to it, these guys were fun. They were having a good time, happy. And they're talking about when they were on other tours with Until I Wake, with Outline and Color. And how they wanted discrepancies on more of those shows than just a select few because of how much fun they were having. That's what it's like going to one of their shows. It's a blast. It's fun. You do not want to miss out on it. And that energy shows in their EP as well. And what I love about this EP personally is it, I brought up in the theory of why I think no one has a consensus favorite on what the best song is on this EP. Everyone has a different take on it. And it's because discrepancies and discrepancies at their core. But when you listen to these songs, each one has a different feel to it that you're going to get. Let's start at the bottom again with Testify. It's like an I Prevail opening riff that then goes bass heavy with Antonio's rapping over it. And then the clean vocals are heavy, but they're also in a flow of like Kingdom Collapse we've had in the podcast many times. Excuse me on that one. You go to Systematic Suffering and it's like, you know, you get this early 2000s vocal style in the uh, chorus mixed with more of this Tech 9 meets POD style vocal pattern and uh, backing in the verses. Then you go to Hands Up, and it's like, you know, with Antonio's flow that is reminiscent of a flow of Tech 9 it also fits in with this full entire, like, Limp Biscuit vibe as well, which fits perfectly. Then you get Recovery, and it's, again, has a discrepancies feel to it, but then the flow of the pacing of Antonio's rapping is similar to Mike Shinoda with more of this Linkin Park esque electronic in the back. You go to Limitless, which is my favorite, and it's like if they took the flow and the vocals of POD and Tech Nine, the verses and the intro are all from Ashes to New, and then the uh, chorus is a breaking Benjamin esque style song. It, it, it flows so perfectly together. You can't help but get into it, can't help but have fun with it. And that's why people are smashing toilets because they're just so hyped up about it. Discrepancy is one of those bands where I look at where their future uh, can go. And like the fact that they do like that rap rock style, but it, it's not just limited to rap rock. I mean, you look at the bands that they've gone out with uh, Until I Wake, Dark Divine, Outline and Color, Varsity. There is a wide array of people that could easily bring this band out on the road with them and continue to do positive things because their energy is there, their passion is there, and it's just something that is way too cool, and you're not going to want to miss out on it. So thank you guys for watching this episode. Please make sure you follow along with Discrepancies and go support them with the brand new EP, Proct of Entertainment, which is out now. Go make sure you check out a live show there. So go to the description of the podcast, which says find 
discrepancies online everything is going to be there links labels for all their social where you can watch their music videos where you can stream their music get their music buy some merch check out where they're going to be playing live near you all down there so go and follow along with them please make sure you also follow along with the corporate Russia podcast we are on facebook and instagram primarily to connect with so please go check us out there link description of the podcast below also make sure you're hitting that subscribe button here on youtube and hit that like button to help out this video in the algorithm it helps us out helps grow the podcast and helps bring more great bands to the podcast that you absolutely love that i absolutely love and I hope you guys love it as well. If you like the audio stream versions, though, hit that subscribe button as well. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Apple Podcasts iHeartRadio, and Amazon. Links are all in the description of the podcast or everything like that. I'm sorry if I'm tongue-tied. It is like 90 degrees where I'm at right now, and it is hot, 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 hot. So I'm getting a little tongue-tied right now. Also want to thank Phoenix Fitness for supporting this podcast. We're 20% off using the code CPP20 at FNX.com. Link description below. Thank you, Phoenix Fitness. Thank you guys from Discrepancies. I'm bringing the inflatable toilet next time I see you guys. So that's me for you guys. Thank you for watching this is the Card Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I am every single one. I'm the big, healthy, and hearty. See y'all! Yeah!